Hello and welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Arcadian Road. It's an 8x10. I uh, painted this a few days ago under uh, L O C K D O W N here in New Zealand. I've been going to work. No one's there but me, and that's all good. We're painting along as long as we can yeah um what do i want to say about this well first of all it's 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 in the sepia vein i'm not calling that out in the title of the video you know but uh i'm really so a lot of times when you're going to go after sepia you want to decide do i want it to be brown ish red ish or greenish these are so you've got brown you got red on one side green on the on the other right green brown or red brown or brown brown which would be kind of uh, saddling those two you know uh raw umber itself is kind of a good example of that is it is it greenish or reddish not really it's kind of dead in the middle between the two yeah, whereas burn umber definitely takes on red uh characteristics and i'm um, possibly some brands of raw umber may even take on red characteristics i think you know when you consider that the umber pigments come from um they have a soil a basis in the soil that um you know uh you're going to get all different kinds of characteristics but uh this one i had uh, the reference image which was based on a quite an old um photograph uh, a pictorialist photograph from the turn of the last century um it had a real green green quality and a lot of times what they would do is they had you know they didn't have color photography but they could make a print that was very red or very green or very blue like they would call them a cyanotype or a derogatype or i'm not an expert in this stuff so if you are uh, wanting to know more about all that stuff just just look into it yeah um, either way, though, this uh, this reference image was very greenish brown, and I liked that. But I, in Photoshop, I pulled it I pulled it right back. Um, I definitely wanted to go with a direction that was a green direction, greenish brown direction. But I didn't want a straight up green painting. So um, what I uh, uh, the main color that I use and that I'm pivoting off of here is a color that. Um, one of the uh, awesome supporters of the channel had sent me which is um, green umber from Old Holland and it's a really neat color and now don't don't despair if you're like oh I need some green umber um, you could very easily make your own green umber by just introducing a small amount of phthalo green into some raw umber you'll be right there and I mean tiny not a lot of <laughs> phthalo green phthalo green is like uh, one of the strongest colors on my palette. I think it's one of the strongest colors in oil painting, period, uh, would be the, the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. They're very strong, and they have very strong tinning strength. They're very transparent as well. Um, anyway, so from there, uh, I decided I did have a little bit of regular raw umber, which I kind of think uh, I leaned on a bit more in the sky. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a little bit of uh, asthma acting up today. <coughs> apologize for that apologize for interrupting your your experience here um yellow ochre uh did i do raw sienna it, i'm sorry you know i should remember these things but basically i'll either go raw sienna or yellow ochre um and i think i went yellow ochre but i didn't want to go into full lot yellows as a matter of fact it may have been that i barely touched it um, so one of the things I kind of um, struggle with on the uh, the sepia toned paintings is the um, transparency issue. Uh, so for in that case, I brought in a bit of brown uh, brown ochre as well um, because it ha brings a little bit of opacity to the proceedings without being extremely strong. Now it definitely is in the red camp. Um, and of course you can bring in white uh, which makes things chalky and then my other um, even more elegant solution is to use the Mars black which is an opaque black as opposed to say lamp black or ivory black both of which are 
you're fairly transparent you know now a lot of times you might even recognize the transparency because they have uh, quite strong tinting strengths so it's going to make you're going to do a stroke and it's black and you're done you know but uh, if you thin it with some oil you'll see what I'm talking about um, by the way I want to point out you notice that I added a bit of dark up in that corner and really you can see how it kind of balances everything out this painting's been sped up by about 10 times or so you know um, and I have to say I really enjoyed doing it had some issues one of the main issues is you see that you see our, our main tree over on our left in the reference image was a, a group of trees right up in the middle going straight up and instead of painting that I painted that little much smaller mass that you see in the middle roughly in the middle and I'm pretty I worked that out I'm pretty happy with that also uh, the sky wasn't amazing um, but you know a lot of times I could composite in another sky uh, actually just so you know you can use that um, the uh, the sky uh, tool in Photoshop the latest version of Photoshop it will pop the sky in anything even if you're making a copy of a uh, even if you bring in a painting it'll replace the sky in that painting so it's using uh, artificial intelligence uh, the way it should be which is to help us instead of dominate society and uh, help our masters be uh, more controlling yeah anyway I uh, see I'm going in opaques now and everything's kind of riffing off of that uh, green umber which has a bit of a greenish feel I uh, brought in a little bit of black a little bit of white I didn't get into one of the things that uh, one of the mistakes I made pretty early on with one of these uh, CP type series things was that I thought oh you know I've got white and black in my palette I can just use grays and have you know completely different tones in the sky but that didn't look right didn't look good so you basically just want to use the white and black to kind of move the needle a little bit uh, where you want it to be without actually getting into uh, if, you, if you think about it the gray that you create with white and black is usually a cool gray and it is a color you might think it's a neutral but it's really a color so um, you can see I would I'm, I'm interested in and this is you know a tonalist painting so everything is sort of pivoting or riffing off a certain tone or a certain approach um, one thing uh, too is the reference image had a much brighter sky um, and which I knocked back a bit because I didn't want it to uh, uh, I wanted again if you want to have something to appear tonalist generally you want to avoid a lot of real bright bright stuff you can have little bright spots but um, in general you want to keep the uh, the key is going to be lower you know and by key if you're not aware of what I'm talking about you can look at the uh, the value scale as uh, very similar to how you would look at the musical scale you know um, l lower notes uh, in the musical scale would be the equivalent of darker uh, values in the chromatic scale or value scale yeah chromatic scale I, again I'm I'm just a painter folks I just make paintings uh, and I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out now um, two you could see how the composition sorts of falls apart without that ridge of sort of mountains in the back it's not mountains it's like a hill or something like that and one of my big tricks one of my big secrets which I'm happy to give you um, is you generally want to kind of treat those mountains or hills in the back as a part of the sky think of them that way um, it's it's very seldom that you're going to want them to have their own sort of presence now uh, you, if you're making a mountain painting that may be the case but even there you wouldn't want them as strong as any foreground elements in your mountain painting because they're in the distance they're going to be some atmospheric haze there yeah uh, so we talked about color, we talked about composition, I made quite a few changes to this and um, all of that by the way is being covered in the members area and the members area consists of, uh, actually before I get into that I want to talk about a little something I did, did different on this painting is I decided to go in and cover the board co color with a sort of thinned bit of, it's mostly 
the uh, yellow, the, I mean the brown ochre with a bit of um, the uh, green umber so that it's not too red. And I decided to go ahead and do this because I didn't want little light bits of stuff. So I don't normally do something like this, um, but it was definitely the way to go there. And you see me kind of getting with my paper towel and sort of just smoothing it out because that's just designed to be underneath everything. And I'll come in and really get some nice strong blacks in there. And I didn't have a lot of blacks in them up, up until this point. The darkest color you're seeing is really that um, uh, the dark, uh, the dark is a tribute of the green umber. Yeah, yeah. So what was I talking about before then? Yeah, we lost our plot, but uh, it's okay. We're just uh, going free form here, and I'm sure it'll come back up because I'm always talking about the same stuff. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm coming in with uh, it's it's the Mars black, and you can see how, wow, you know now things are coming together. And one of the reasons I did that little coating of the. Um, you know kind of a thin brown ochre on everything as I just I didn't want to have a lot of uh, little patches of light lighter colored board color peeking through and that was a very successful strategy and it's kind of like something I would do uh, even if you look at the earliest days of this channel oh that's what I was gonna say I was talking about the live thing so members area has a live version of this painting it's two hours long or something like that uh, and I'm giving you, uh, I mean, I hit some of the points in these sped up 15-minute uh, versions. Uh, but uh, you get a little more depth there um, it, with the uh, the live video. And some of the, you know, there are some live um, videos in the members area that are up to seven or eight hours long where I'm going after either very complex scenes uh, or very large scenes, which of course will generally take a bit a bit longer um, so if you're interested in more depth and I still and the reason I'm bringing this up is I get a lot of people saying well this is great but it would be great if it was real time well it is real time if you join the members area which is uh, you know, like six bucks a month and people tip in they tip out you know it's all good uh, and it also supports me and helps uh, helps me with my painting practice uh, which is really good especially since you know um, the world's gone so crazy and they decided to not let uh, people travel normally and things a lot of my sales were to tourists out here in New Zealand um, for many years and uh, um, you know I, I have to say God bless the the Kiwis out here a lot of them stepped up and bought some paintings so I had some good sales before the L-O-C-K-D-O-W-N uh, that we're in now and hopefully I will after they're done being uh, communists out here so um, and I'm not I know you don't come to this channel for a lot of that information so I won't bother you with that now what I'm painting in the um, I won't bother you too much with it <laughs> but I then I won't be totally silent either because it's my channel and uh, honestly if you don't like it and you don't want to hear it there's you know so many millions of other videos you can watch so it's all good God bless you and um, uh, you know no 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 beef here with you yeah it's all good um, anyway we're getting pretty close to the painting being completed so we're gonna have a little few little highlight bits in um, I'm real happy with it it's the kind of composition that could have gone one of the things like everything about that road point you off to the um, to our left hand side um, so that that's why I say that little ridge of hills in the back was really important because your eye kind of slides around that loops up in the clouds back down in the tree and then loops in through the full road up oh, sorry about that but you know basically loops back into the road and rinses and repeats now the mass that I have put over on the um, on our right hand side the darker mass is basically just there to sort of stop your eye um, maybe I could have gone higher with it I didn't want it to be too distracting um, but you know I ended up that these were there were pro lots of intrinsic problems with the reference which you need to address and design you know in your in your paintings as well you always got to think about this how is the eye moving through the painting anyway I can see we're getting close to the end here thank you so much for joining me today I really appreciate you coming around really appreciate you uh, check out that members area on my website I have some nice paintings for sale on my website you can help me out there too anyway 
until i come back with another video do me a favor do me a solid take good care stay out of trouble